We used to sell batteries by saying to people, look, start small, see what you can afford. Get a small battery, they're modular, add an extra one, add an extra one. But now this federal rebate has completely changed the game because you're going to get only one lucky dip at the rebate. After that, you're going to pay out of your pocket. Most people now go, oh, I need a big battery. And then they come to me and say, what size should I get? And I have to say, you in many cases go too small, you're going to regret it. So what size is right for you? Presented by Your Energy Answers. So if your solar produces a certain amount and it's only a little bit and then you get a huge battery, hmm. Now, yes, you can get a really big battery and only get a little bit of solar in and then you could use that battery on the grid to cycle. You get the electricity to come into the battery when you're sitting at off-peak charge rates and then you use that electricity if you're in peak rates. Now, that only works if you're on a time-of-day metering system because some people have subscribed to a flat tariff and in that case cycling the battery in and out makes no sense so the golden rule to start off with make sure whatever is excess out of your solar is kind of linked with your battery size now how do you find out what i create in my solar so the first thing is you go to an output calculator we have one on yourenergyanswers.com you can go in there look for the output calculator you put in your postcode you put in the system size of your existing system and then it'll tell you month by month what your system generates as well as you get an idea about the days even now you might find I'm using 25 kilowatt hours during the day. My solar system generates in many months about 35 to 50 kilowatt hours. So I have about 10 to 15, 20 kilowatts hour spare, which means in that case, you'll be looking at a battery from a 10 kilowatt hour level all the way to a 20 kilowatt hour level. Now, the problem is you often don't really know what you use at night. So think about it. What do I use during the evening hours from, let's say, six o'clock onwards till the morning? Do I actually like baking at night? Do the washing machine get regular use you know, in the evening or the dryer? Say my husband loves vacuuming after nine o'clock. Whatever it is, heaters, air con, look at how much on average it is used and then look at what the consumption of those items are. Average family during the night should possibly allow for about 10 to 12 kilowatt hours. It could be even up to 20 if you really get high, high electricity bills. So that gives you a bit of an edge and an idea what the size of your battery should be. But now don't undersize even that because the solar doesn't always go like shh. It kind of can go like this, which means it's a sunny day. It starts and it goes coming overcast and then you get sunny again. Now, you might have a consumption in the house going up when the sun has just gone down. And that means you're going to pay for that electricity. So in that case, your battery will back it up. That's perfectly for a battery. But if you have your battery starting empty in the morning and you straight away start with shade, well, there's not much going into the battery. And then more during the day, you will maybe find, oh, there's another dip and now I want to get it out of the battery. So by the night, it's not full. So in that case, a larger battery will help. Now, I've kind of given you an idea how to work out how much electricity you use. But the important thing is also when you use it. And maybe you want to move your consumption pattern a bit. So if the husband loves vacuuming at night when there's no solar available, get him to start at 7.30 in the morning because then you've shifted that load from night to the day, and that means you could theoretically afford a smaller battery. Now also, you got to consider what's the size for the future. I'm not having an EV now, but I might have in the future. And my five-year-old will be a teenager, and we've got another on the way, and those teenagers, oh my God, aren't they energy vampires? Think ahead when you now buy the battery because you're buying a product that will be with you for 10 to 15 years. Now, you might say, oh, look, we think of selling the house in three years. Who cares? No, 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 no. A big battery and a big solar system going forward is going to be a huge asset, especially if it's quality. There's no point buying the cheap stuff. I have seen, again, people texting me and showing me their quotes. The best one was a 28 kilowatt hour battery inverter system everything installed 10-year warranty i think it gave you a free ice cream at the end of the system install for two thousand three hundred dollars so right now you're looking about a thousand dollars for one kilowatt hour of battery of a quality battery installed so if you take the tesla powerwall 
at 13.5 kilowatt hours there you got your price somewhere between 12 13 15 thousand dollars depending on difficulty of install and all those things that's a 13 and a half kilowatt hour now this particular offer was 27 kilowatt hours so double the tesla at seven thousand dollars which is about half the price how can that happen a chinese manufacturer with a relatively cheap product not much in it that lasts nice shiny box has come to australia and selling it like hotcakes with one sales guys running around a couple of companies jumped on it and in this industry is happened over and over and over again i once created a list of over a thousand solar retail companies and they all played the same game i'm giving you a long workmanship warranty i give you a long product warranty I make a sales guy that can talk fast and I bring him to your house and I promise you the world and you cannot believe how cheap this product is. And then what happens is the product actually does not live up to the expectation and the customer goes, oh, well, 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 I got the two warranties, how stable I'm sitting, I'm sitting safe. No, 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 you become part of a scam because they've already planned to close that company within three years of having opened it. And solar, I don't know, shine will become solar special shine. And then they rebirth again and they do the whole thing again, maybe sometimes out of the same premises. And you go, oh, well, I've still got the manufacturer behind. And you ring around. That manufacturer has left Australia. They've taken their money. They've done the runner. Your warranty is worthless. And with solar panels, it wasn't too bad because they ripped them off, put them in landfill, terrible for the environment. But they gave you some new ones, and this time you learned and you bought quality. But with batteries, you got literally an energy powder keg sitting there. Why would you be stupid to putting untested gear into your home that has the equivalent literally of a powder cake sitting there. Now it's not going to stop working. Went up like a powder cake. And you've got some things there ticking away. And you're going to have to pay somebody big bucks to get this removed out of your house. If it's not the brands that have already sold batteries five to six years ago, or even at least just three years ago, if those companies have just come now on the smell of the battery rebate to throw their stuff into the mix, they don't have technical support. They don't have a physical office. They haven't got 80 people in the after sale service like SunGrow has. They haven't got solar services guy backing them up like Sig Energy has done. They haven't got like Tesla, the brand that means they cannot avoid to actually uh, do the right thing by you. So in those cases, you're going to buy crap. You're going to do your money in. You're going to have a headache in two or three years. And your wife, if they see this and tells you not to do it and you did it, I hope she nags you and gives you a hard time over wasting your money. That's all I can see. I've seen it too many times. A thousand companies deliberately gone bust 500 manufacturers come and gone the playbook is there and it's going to be bigger this time when it comes to the battery now there's another very valuable reason why to go for a big battery because i don't know if you realize this but let's say you got your phone and you know after a couple of years the battery doesn't last as long and then you have to charge it more often than it one point becomes the annoying factor where you now run around with a little battery pack next to it strapped to the phone and then eventually you just go no nah, need a new phone now in this case our batteries are the same if you work these batteries very hard meaning you've undersized the battery really for your need you cycle them three four five times a day etc that means your battery won't last as long the warranty often is linked with cycle life. So even you might have a 10 year warranty, but it might also be saying this many thousand cycles and you've reached those cycles at six years. That means that's how long your battery has really got the warranty. So therefore, if you have a larger battery, you're gonna work the baby much less hard, which means the longevity of it will last much longer because it's not an equal curve. The harder you work it, the lower the lifespan. And so in that case, I would argue that maybe you could stuff it up as quick as seven years with a good quality product if you really ride it hard. And you could probably get 15 years out of it if you actually oversize it. So that's another reason why a larger battery 
is a damn good idea. Now let's come to that famous VPP model where some people say, oh, you can make extra money out of batteries if you join a VPP, virtual power plant. Somebody just told me, and I haven't had time to check it, that in the last 12 months, we had more volatility and price spikes in the electricity wholesale price than we had in the previous 10 years. And why is that? Because the coal-fired power station age, they stop, and at that point in time, the price shoots up, and people turn on gas-fired power station, people discharge batteries to bring the demand into the grid, and therefore the price slowly comes down again. Now, if you sit there and play that with, let's say, a um, VPP provider or with a software like Amber, and you live in an area with high volatility, you can actually make more money out of your battery. Because, you know, you say, oh, I never want to give out more than 30% of my own battery. That's where I stop it. And everything else is available in the market to be traded to make extra money for me. That's working fine, but it's only working fine if you've got a big enough battery to make it worth your while. So there's another argument for going big with the battery. Obviously, if we have more and more batteries, and therefore they can all come into the grid, then theoretically the volatility of the market should be less, and those opportunities for people with battery to make money should actually go down. But trust me, when we pull one of those coal-fired power stations out of the mix, the hole that we generate, and I don't know how they're going to plug it, because I told in my last video, get more gas generation into the system now, I would say the volatility will increase. And therefore, you with a big battery will sit comfortable at home with a backup to make some money out of those batteries. Now, I hear some people, and they already told me, oh, I'm going to be really smart. I'm going to get a small battery, and then when the vehicle to grid comes, I'm going to use my vehicle to plug it into the house, and that way I've got a big battery, and I don't have to really worry about batteries. True? Good idea? Nah. Do you really want to wake up in the morning and drive your car to work and find out that, oh, at the night, the aircon that we ran all night has zapped my car and I'm only allowed to go 15 k's and after that I'm going to be stuck somewhere on a charger for two hours. But I think in reality, you're going to just go, no, nah, I need a decent sized battery and then the vehicle to grid is extra. But you don't have the time with the rebate sitting there right now and thinking about it till the vehicle to grid is coming through because this is the time now to get the battery. Nobody's getting a 6.6 .6 to 7 kilowatt hour battery. They're getting 14, they're getting 24, they're getting 32 kilowatt hour batteries, which means the 1 million battery systems actually have now shrunk to being available around 250 to 350,000 on the current budget that the government has put aside. And they said that lasts till 2030. I do my math 1,500 solar companies installing one battery a day on average. That's 7,500 batteries. Now you divide that by 250, 300,000 batteries available. You finished in 30, 40, 50 weeks, less than a year. The battery rebate will have run out. Now the government said, oh, it's uncapped. What does that mean? Do you really believe when the budget has allowed 2.3 billion in five years and we suck it out in one, that and mysteriously in the current financial situation, there'll be another two, three, five, ten billion just popping out of nowhere to give out at the rebate without strings attached? I don't think so. I don't believe the battery rebate will be as generous as it is right now going in the future. And why do I say that? Because I've been in this industry for 20 years and I've seen this history repeat. There was an $8,000 rebate, and somebody worked out, oh, in the rules, in old people's homes, every room is considered a residence. I can get $8,000 for every hickledy-pickledy room in this 200-room old people's home. There's $1.6 million. Now, what's that? 8,000 times 10 is 80,000 times 100. Yeah, 1.6 million. 1.6 million of rebate available in this one old people's home. So when somebody worked that out and went door knocking around lunchtime and signing the oldies up in all these old people's home around Sydney, they had $56 million worth of rebates sitting in the back of a truck and personally driving them to Canberra.
How are you this fine morning? I'm just fine, and how about you? And Peter Garrett stopped the $8,000 rebate the day after these forms were dropped off in the halls of his department because they realized, oh my God, we're being milked hard. So I'm telling you, the rebate, in some way, will see changes down the track. The solar retailer industry will again cop it because they're the ones that always suffer when changes happen to rebates. Customers' behavior changes. You cannot plan for it. Suddenly you got stock and now suddenly it stops the phone ringing and you still got to pay for the stock. All this stuff is going to happen. So now my advice is don't go for a small battery. Right now you got the chance to get bigger. So what's the summary of all of this? Go around your house do an energy audit. Work out, I'm using 35 kilowatt hours, I can see that at the back of my bill, it tells me my daily consumption. How do I use that? 25 during the day, 10 at night, that's your minimum size for your battery. But now, oh, I'm gonna get an EV down the track. Maybe I can't avoid getting an EV down the track. Maybe we'll have to have two. And maybe you wanna charge it out of the battery a little bit, not too much, maybe more out of the solar. And then, oh yeah, the kids. They're small now. They're going to be teenager. Oh, there'll be more use of electricity. And the two back rooms, we haven't got aircon in there yet, but we're thinking of getting that. Oh, that'll add to it. So suddenly, you're actually going to be much bigger than what you just initially thought. And then my argument is just add another third to it because there are all these things that we don't know, but that certainly come. And guess what? I've heard many people say, oh, the battery I bought, it was a bit too small. At midnight, it's finished. And for the rest of the night, I pay for the aircon that I'm running. And, oh, it's getting still quite expensive. But guess what? Never had anybody complain and say, oh, my battery's too big. No, it just hasn't happened. So in this case, trust me, the old saying, bigger is better. Please support the channel by liking the video. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. And check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.